On today's episode of Locked on Lightning, the playoffs start this week. The regular season is just about done, and the Lightning take on the Buffalo Sabres tonight. We talk about all that and more on Locked on Lightning. Your Locked on Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. Just a reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. On this episode, we're talking about not sweating the losses as the Lightning have lost their last two games we're talking about the final thank goodness the final matchup against the buffalo sabers we talk about that as well as the playoffs starting this week it is finally here people it is finally here but before we grab any of those topics i want to humbly remind you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast give us follow wherever podcasts are should be an audio form we're also available on youtube subscribe to our channel there hit that notification button so as soon as the newest episode drops or any videos like I said, playoffs with the playoffs comes more content, and you definitely want to be on top of all of that. So go ahead, hit that notification button, and subscribe to the channel, please. So the Lightning have lost their last two games in a row. Something that, while disappointing, not entirely, I would say, surprising. Uh, you had to imagine with the way the Lightning have played over the last month or so that, you know, it... it there was going to bound to be one last hiccup before the regular season came to a conclusion. And of course it came against Ottawa kind of like what we, even though I was kind of wishful thinking that they were going to win that game, I was not the least surprised that Ottawa gave them a game. And then over the weekend they lost to the Capitals, which is another team that is fighting for their playoff lives. Actually with that, that win, the Capitals moved into the second wild card spot. Uh, above uh, the Islanders. And I, I said at the beginning of the month that on paper, all these games, you would expect the Lightning to win, except for maybe uh, the, the games against Toronto. But like I also said, you know, going into these matchups, you have teams that the Lightning have historically struggled against this year as well as in past years. Uh, you also have teams that are fighting for their playoff lives. You know, like I just said, the Capitals, uh, they're in the midst of that second wild card spot race with the New York Islanders. And you have teams that are kind of just trying to show their merit, just trying to, you know, give them a, a go of it with these last couple of games of the year. Uh, like Detroit, who has kind of pretty much fallen out of it, like the Penguins, who have fallen out of it, but still are going to play hard. You know, you know, you're always going to get a good game out of the Pittsburgh Penguins, regardless, as long as. Uh, Sidney Crosby is there, Uh, but I am here to tell you all, all you Lightning fans, not to sweat about it. I know usually in in, in weekends or or weeks past or episodes past, I'd probably be sitting here talking about how this is unacceptable, how this is really something that can't happen this late in the season, especially against these two teams that one is completely out of it and the other is teetering on the fence of elimination or a playoff spot. But really, I, I think that given, you know, Vasilevsky not playing in one of those games, as well as the fact that, you know, the Lightning have sealed up their 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 spot in the playoffs. It looks like right now, unless something catastrophic happens, which it's not going to happen in these last two games of the year, the Lightning are going to play the Bruins. So their future is pretty much set in stone. As for what's going to happen once the playoffs start, uh, given given that, though, so you, you look at the remaining schedule as well as these two losses, I would like to get a win against the, in these final two games. But the thing is, you know, if you lose one out of the two, preferably you, you beat Toronto because I always like having a win on the last game of the season, especially against if it's a division rival, especially if it's against someone that you could potentially see in the future, in the playoffs. 
you know, it, it's not something that Lightning fans should sweat because, like I said, everything is set in stone. This team is, for the most part, you know, except in those losses, even those losses, I still saw a fight. I still saw resilience. Um, even in the loss earlier in the month uh, against Detroit, as well as the one later in that week against Pittsburgh, you know, you're still seeing a Lightning team that is playing well. Um, it's a little bit of a different story going into the playoffs where you're going to be playing, you know, with your best lineup every night. Uh, and, you know, the Lightning, I'm not making excuses, but at the same time, like I said, Vasilevsky uh, did not play in one of those games. Uh, I would imagine he's probably going to play maybe in tonight's game. It's going to be a hard yes for the last game of the season. Uh, but, you know, these last couple of games are just kind of just, I guess, you could say playing with some last minute changes, seeing how things work here, seeing how things work there, uh, maybe on on this line or that line or whatever. But I, I really think that this is the point in the season where, you know, you just got to have fun with it. You just got to have fun because once the playoffs start, really, it's going to be in super intense, as we all know, during every sequence, during almost every puck possession. Uh and, and that's going to be very stressful uh, for all Lightning fans as well as Bruins fans as well. But I, I think that you know this is a this is a great part of the season. I think that you know this is like I said, and really, really what I'm alluding to is the fact that you know Lightning fans could they don't have to worry about what happens in these last couple of games because really at the end of the day it doesn't really determine anything for the lightning. And I think that that's a great thing for them. You know, I would like to see very good performances though, continued very good performances out of this team all around, especially Stamkos. Uh, you definitely want to see Kucherov uh, continue to tally points. I, in my opinion, and this is probably seeming biased, but I think he's got it locked up now. I mean, the last week or so, the last couple of weeks, really, he has proven that, he is head and shoulders above McDavid and, and McKinnon. I mean, what he has done with this team and, and how he has played. I mean, what more of a what more of an of an argument do you really need to make in order for to, to prove that this guy is worthy of being counted as the best player in the league? You know, really that's what it comes down to. And and I think that really, you know, those of those people who say, well, you know, he hasn't done this. Well, you know, the ones that make the excuses, those are the people that really are just doing whatever they can to just bring him down to show, you know, what their other, uh, what the people that they want to win uh, are doing. Whereas, I mean, you look at the stats right now, Kucherov is at 141, McKinnon's at 138, McDavid's at 130. If I don't know how many games left, I assume they have two games left as well for Edmonton. But I mean, I don't expect him to score 10 points, which would be wild uh, to take over or at least, you know, a little over 10 points in his last two games. McKinnon, I, I think, you know, he could very well put up three point performances in the last two games of, of their season. Uh, Coach, we could see the same thing out of him. I mean, we could very well see a 145 point season. Um, if he comes out swinging, which I mean, we all know he's going to, he's going to try and get to 145, as as a lot of guys in any sport love to finish with a nice, solid number. So expect that. As for the goals in the season, I mean, that's a one man show right there with Austin Matthews, 69 goals. Kucherov is is well down from that point. Actually, has more goals than Kucherov this season. Point. I don't know. You know, I would have liked to have seen him get 50 again, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. He, if anything, um, I know he's going to get a lot of a lot of touches the next couple of games and a lot of opportunities to shoot. Um, but as as much as you want guys to hit certain numbers before the the season ends, you got to play the right way, and and I expect this team to do so. And, and I think that. The guys you are going to see, as much as they're going to go out there and they're going to want to compete, I think you're going to see a group of guys who is going to be very relaxed and just having fun, if they haven't been already having fun. But I think the right word to use is relaxed. I think we're going to see a very relaxed team 
uh, just going out there and playing the game and not stressing the small things. So, and, and, and I think that lightning fan should use that same approach as before we get into the games, like I said, that are going to be highly stressful. So let me know in the comments below, how excited are you for the playoffs to start this week? Obviously we're going to talk about more about that to wrap up the episode later on, but Coming up, we're going to talk about the final rendezvous with the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting season. It's been an interesting matchup uh, with the Sabres. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. But first, we're going to talk about our first sponsor of today's show, and that is our friends over at eBay Motors. Now, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances, performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So as always, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. Go ahead, subscribe to our channel there. Hit that notification button and drop a comment below to get in on the conversation. So we just got done talking about, you know, not sweating the small things, going out there and having fun. And I hope that we could finally say uh, tonight that we are going to have a blast against the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, I always get nervous when the Lightning play the Sabres or, or the Red Wings or the Senators. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Those those smaller, I wouldn't say smaller. That's that's not the right word for it. Those lower tier teams that have not been good over the last couple of years always seem to show up when when they play against the Lightning. Uh, right now in the season series, Buffalo is up two to one. Hopefully, the Lightning could could eventually even things up tonight with a win in their last game and. Like I said before, and this goes back to really every game we've probably ever talked about that has involved the Sabres. It's just something with these these teams that are not in it or younger or, you know, they they always just step up to the plate when they play against the Lightning. I, I don't know what it is. I don't. And, and, you know, one can make the case, really, that that maybe the lightning sometimes take those games a little bit less seriously than they probably should. Um, at least in games past, I could tell you, you know, with certain performances that the lightning have had, especially against Buffalo, uh, those games have not worked out in favor for the lightning, of course, but you know, you always want to, you, you don't want to end a season series on the losing end, regardless of where you are in the season, whether you're going into the playoffs or you're already planning your vacation for the summer, you, you still want to end whatever matchup that you have with a team on a high note. And I know definitely the Lightning want to get that one last win against these guys under their belt so they could just kind of file that away for the regular season and then focus on Toronto. I'm not saying that if they lose tonight, that's going to stick with them. It's not. I mean... My thing has always been, and this might sound cliche, and I've been saying this probably a lot more lately than I have really over the last couple of years, is that when the Lightning play the brand of hockey that we all know that they are capable of, the brand of hockey that we have seen them play over the last couple of years, I mean, not the last couple of years, I'll say the last couple of weeks, because I feel, I, I, I said it a little while back, if you want to check it on that episode, I did did talk about how I haven't seen the Lightning play this way as well as they did over the last month since probably 2020. But when you go into tonight's game, when you're going up against a team like Buffalo, who really has nothing to lose, I mean, they lose whatever. At this point, I don't really think it's going to significantly affect their draft position. Um, I Off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure if they're even a... Uh, a lottery team, but, and I'm sure they are, 
Um, yeah, they are. But what you want to do in a game like this, and I think maybe sometimes even I get carried away when we're talking about these lower tier teams is that you don't, I, I, I normally would say you want to go out there and put your foot on their throat right away just to establish your dominance on the game and get the game going at your speed and, and your progression. And I think that we're going to see a stereotypical lightning performance tonight, win or lose. They're going to start off. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say slow because I think that the lightning as of late have been really started out their games with a very calculated approach, something that we have not seen in quite some time. And they, they, they allow themselves to ease into the game and then just allow themselves to get better as the game goes on. And sometimes that does not work out. Sometimes that could potentially put you behind the eight ball. And that's what we have seen in some of the games over the last couple of weeks. But I think tonight you're going to see the same approach. I think you're going to see a team that knows what they got to do to win the game. A team that understands that you don't have to necessarily approach this game as a must win and that you need to go out and let the game come to you and allow the things that have been working for you to go out there and, and just stick with the game plan that you know. So we're going to see a lot of heavy looks at Braden Point, a lot of heavy looks uh, near Cooch. I would expect Stamkos is going to get his chances. Um, I talked about it on the last episode last week how the thing that has really impressed me with Stamkos and then I think that has really changed things for him and the Lightning this year is, yeah, he's still taking that one-timer, and you would like to see him do some other stuff other than that to get his goal scoring. But the fact that he's moving around, that he's taking that one-timer from low, from the circle, uh, in the slot area, from the point you know it, the fact that he is giving the other team different looks I think has really helped him because games pass you don't expect that and I think that that's really going to be the key not only for the lightning in this game but really going forward even the playoffs is that whether it be point or Hagel coach Stamkos whatever you know it's not a crime to want to go back to what you know and but at the same time, if you're going to do that, maybe change the side of the ice, maybe high, go from high to low and vice versa, stuff like that. Because then you fall into kind of this repetitive game plan that, like I have complained on last episode, on past episodes, the other team half the time is expecting it. Um, like for a perfect example, when we used to see Stamkos just sit in that circle and Kucherov would give him three, four looks per sequence. And half the time the goalie would save it or the other team would break up the pass, clog up the, the passing lane. And now we have a race down the other side of the ice. And that's a, that's a no, no, especially this, this point in the season. And I would like to see a convincing win though tonight. I will say as tough as Buffalo is uh, against the lightning and, and as we all know how those games trend against the Lightning with these with these level of teams, I would still like to see a big win. And what I mean by that is, you know, a big margin of victory. I would like to see maybe 5-2, 4-1. I think we're going to get two goals out of Buffalo tonight, though. So maybe 5-2, even 6-3, I'll be happy with as long as we, we continue to see the con the the usual suspects get their looks and their and their point production and i would also like to see more performance though out of the lower tier guys or at least some sort of performance that that shows me that they're still being involved on the offensive side of things uh like the mitchell chafees um i think that connor sherry has really done well in the spots that he is given um I don't know if that's enough to constitute him 
more playing time or consistent playing time in the playoffs. But it, it's one of those things where if he's playing well and it's not hampering his line, I don't mind seeing more of Shiri uh, in certain spots. Um, but I still want to see out of the lower tier guys, I want to see Esma and Paul and Chafee really getting their looks and, and really being involved, like I said, in the offensive production of this Lightning team. Um, and I and I think really the key to this game, especially in a game like this, where it could very well get chippy, like I said, last meeting of the season, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, there's really not any bad blood between these teams, so I don't expect anything to get crazy, but you got to still just play your game. And, and I, it, as with every Lightning game, it starts with puck possession, and I expect... Uh, there to be a big emphasis tonight on the broadcast about play along the boards, face-offs, neutral zone possession, neutral zone defense. Um, that's all going to be very scrutinized, I think, not only from from the broadcast, but I think from us as well as fans. So let me know in the comments below, what is your prediction for tonight's game as the Lightning take on the Sabres for the last time until next season? We'll talk about that tomorrow, obviously. Hopefully it's a lightning win and we can look forward to uh, Wednesday's game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So coming up in just a little bit, we're going to talk about the playoffs starting this week. It's one of the greatest times of year, I think, other than the fact that opening week of the NHL. We talk about that. We talk about maybe too early predictions and, and all of that as well. But before we jump into that topic, I just want to talk about our last sponsor on today's show. And that is our friends over at Sleeper. Now, we are at the finish line of the NHL season, Tampa Bay Lightning fans. Lightning are locked into that playoff spot. Looks like they're playing the Bruins. But I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. All you have to do is pick studs like Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov to record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. So use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL. You'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. So one last time, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed. If you want to reach out to me or the show, go ahead, reach out to our show account on Twitter at LO underscore, L, locked on, L, LO underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. And you can reach out to me as well at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y, D-8-N-K. Love hearing from all of you. Tweet to me your predictions or your questions about the playoffs, uh, whether it be player performance or how fast do I think that the Lightning are going to take care of business in the first round. All that, all that stuff. I can't wait to talk about it after the Maple Leafs game concludes. So we're talking about, obviously, the playoffs start this week. And I was... Thinking to myself the other day, you know, looking at the the East and and you know the 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 potential trip that the Lightning may need to take if they do make indeed a run this year, and the thing that really has occurred to me looking at these teams is, and this might be an obvious thing to everybody. It seems to me that the East is completely wide open. I think it's anyone's run to take. Uh, I mean, you look at the top teams, you look at the Rangers, you look at the Hurricanes, Boston, who the Lightning are going to be playing in the first round, Panthers, Maple Leafs. I look at all those teams, and... Concerning the fact that the Lightning have also beaten all those teams at least once this year, I could say with confidence that really I'm not scared of who the Lightning play. And I think that has really been my approach since March that for the first time in a while, I don't really care who they play. I mean, ideally, I would have loved to have played Toronto in the first round. 
I think anybody in the East would prefer to play uh, Toronto in the first round, but looks like the Cats are going to. Uh, but then again, it could change. I mean, Boston has two games left. Florida has one game left. Florida wins and Boston drops their last two. Could be an interesting first round, but we're going to operate with the with with the idea or with the predetermination that the Lightning will be playing Boston in the first round. And it's one of those things where it's just you know, it, it, it's always funny when you look at quid, coincidence. I said that this is the first time that I feel like this Lightning team has played well, really well, uh, to a point to where I could say championship caliber to where it reminds me of 2020 going into the bubble. And as we all know, the Lightning ended up playing Boston, and that was a, that was a very tough series for the Lightning. And even before the pandemic happened, that was just an incredible back and forth that these two teams had, even this season as well. Win or lose, those were phenomenal games uh, between these two teams. And and I feel like even though the Panthers have gotten better and have really, you know, solidified themselves as like a legit contender, because I feel like in years past where the Panthers, you know, they've played well, they've gotten to the playoffs here and there. And but I always felt like as probably a lot of Lightning fans have felt also that, you know, it was really. They almost kind of felt like it was big brother versus little brother um obviously with the run that the panthers went on last year it's a little different but i and the rivalry has i think has gotten really more a lot more intense i could still think i i still think that that boston tampa rivalry is very much alive and very much intense and it's going to make a very very good first round playoff series. And I'm not trying to throw that out there saying I would rather prefer play Boston. Like I said, at the end of the day, whoever is in the lightning way to get to the Stanley cup final, you know, you got to play those guys regardless of whether you want to play them or not. And, you know, the age old cliche about the playoffs, you know, be careful who you wish playing against. And I mean, I don't care. Like I said, I don't care, but, like I said, I look at one through five out of the East. I don't see a team that really scares me. Um, Carolina is one of those teams that is just, they're interesting in the way that it's really a toss up. You could get a very good hockey team that plays as well together as anybody else in the league. Or you get a team that kind of is just maybe severely hand, uh, handcuffed by the moment, and that's not that's not a jab at the Hurricanes. That's just the fact. I look at the Rangers; they're a team that I still think, regardless of the runs that have gone on the last couple of years, they still have a lot of growing up to do. I mean, you have a lot of young players on that team. You have a goaltender who this year has looked very shaky at times. And, you know, I, I just feel like you run into a team like the Lightning or even if the, the Rangers end up playing Boston. I mean, that's also another team that, you know, you still have some veterans from those older teams that have been successful, but really it's you're kind of getting a little bit of a turnover um, in Boston. But I look at the other teams and I don't see anyone who has as grizzled as Tampa. You Like I said, you look at Tampa, yeah, you have some new faces and guys that maybe haven't quite been there. But you also have a lot more guys that have been there, whether like we have talked about extensively with Duclair uh, going to the cup final last year with the Panthers, or you even talk about, you know, obviously the core group of these guys, Point, Cooch, Hedman, Stamkos, Vasilevsky. You have enough guys on this team that are still very much in the prime of their careers and are playing well for the most part this year 
uh, that could steer the ship in the right direction. And and then you look at the other teams, you look at Toronto, I don't see a team that is confident. I've, I've spoken that very truthfully this year. I see a team that has a, a ton of talent. I see a team that also doesn't ex- want to accept the fact that it is poor at certain positions. But I also see a group of guys that don't know how to win. I mean, how, how f- much further can you really look at yourself to go when you've only won one playoff game in what 10 years it has been maybe I don't I don't remember maybe longer than that but I look at the lightning as kind of this is their 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 cup to lose almost you know obviously it's going to be a tough road and obviously you know it's I'm making it seem a lot more simple than it is those of you who have been lightning fans well before uh this year you know, you could look on any of the cup runs, whether it be in the bubble in 1920, uh, if you want to look at 2021, or even 2004, if you want to go all the way back there. I mean, you could even go back to 2015, even though the Lightning lost that year. Or you could even look at the year that they lost the year after when they were going for the three-peat against Colorado. I mean, you know, the playoffs are all about the game and the other team throwing wrenches in your plans and you having to overcome. And it takes a lot of veteran leadership. It takes a lot of grizzled veterans to know how, like I said, to steer, steer the ship in the right direction. And I look out of all these teams and really the lightning are the ones that stand out. And I think a lot of people agree with me, regardless of what fan base you're from. Nobody wants to play the Tampa Bay lightning right now, regardless of the fact that this team has lost two games in a row. Nobody is taking that seriously. They know, like as well as we know, as soon as the first buzzer sounds for that game one, it is on. And like we saw last year against Toronto, you got to get the series completed against the Lightning as soon as possible. You let them in. They start to get comfortable, and boom, it could end before you even get a chance to get collected together. And we saw that with Toronto. They, I mean, listen, they won that series, but they barely won that series. So let me know in the comments, how far do you think the Lightning can go realistically? I'm going to say they could go as far as they let themselves to go, which I know is not really a clear answer, but it's really they're the master of their own destinies. So let me know in the comments below, and we'll be back tomorrow to talk about Hopefully a win against the Buffalo Sabres as well as other stuff in Lightning News. So that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you in the next one.